What is up everyone, Nike here, and this is a little bit of a different idea. This is not going to be a stream, this is going to be a video. Primarily because I'm going to be preoccupied with a bunch of races coming up very shortly. Probably around the time that this video is going to be uploaded. But I wanted to talk about aspect of my um, IRL adventures, which is motorsport photography. Specifically, especially since we have some of the tracks to play around with in Forza, some of my favorite tracks to go to, not only favorite tracks to, to race in the game, obviously, but tracks that I've been to a plethora of times that I've worked at, and I just love them in all aspects. I've never really had a bad time besides, like, long hours of work, but that's kind of always going to come with any sort of work. But there are tracks, um, as, like I said, especially ones that are on here, that I absolutely adore and will adore for all time, anytime. And there's some tracks that I really love that are unfortunately not in, in Forza, not even in Project Cars. There's some that are kind of just, they've, they've never really been included too much, uh, except for in certain games like NASCAR games. But I'm going to be talking about some of the ones that I especially love. And the first one's going to be Daytona here. We're going to go in a Porsche. Daytona is basically my home track. I have been going uh, since I was a kid, uh, mainly to NASCAR events, and then I learned about the Rolex 24 and a bunch of the other events that they have um, at the track. And especially now that I kind of work in the, the sports car motorsport industry, I especially have come to love sort of the dynamic of the Rolex 24. And one of the things that gets me is that in like Forza 7, we have you know day and night but we don't have rain which is weird because it rains all the time all the goddamn time it rains it seems florida is such a tricky place for sebring and for for uh daytona that it just it, it rains constantly and it's such a difficult thing when when drivers have to deal with it and when we have to deal with it as photographers and it can change like on a dime but, um Oh god, holy crap, Jesus Christ, what in the hell is up with AI? Okay, no damage. I They can't take a first type corner for anything, even on the highest difficulty, it sucks. But, um, going back to the weather, it's really dynamic. Daytona and Sebring, but mainly Daytona, is like one of the most dynamic places that, that has one of the largest races. Um, Rolex 24 is a 24-hour event, if you don't know, and it's it's the start of the infra season, so it happens right at the beginning of the year. It's one of the first kind of races that happens kind of in the world to kick off a season, and it brings drivers and team members and cars from all over the world. There's teams that specifically only race Daytona, maybe Sebring too, but really Daytona's like the big show. It's the American Le Mans, so people put a lot of effort into preparing for this event. Not only do you have rain that can kind of pop up out of nowhere because the, it's Florida, but the temperatures at the beginning of the year can get down to 30. I think this year it was down to like mid-20s, so we were freezing, especially before sunrise where I got some of like my favorite photos. It's always great during sunrise when it's not when the weather works out. Um, it was freezing. I had to go inside the media center because my fingers were locked up and I, I, I'm like, i like, I can't stay out any longer. I had to wait for it to warm up more. But Daytona has been a long-standing track of mine that I've enjoyed. I've, I've grown to know a lot of my current friends in the motorsport industry through Daytona. I've had family members that have raced, um, in Daytona in the lower series, but still at the track during the, the road train for a weekend. And it's been pretty much my most visited track for work and for as a fan. Um, I've been here for multiple Daytona 500s. I've worked the Daytona 500. Most of it, though, has been for IMSA events more recently. Um, I've been here for the Classic 24, where they bring out some of the best kind of like historic cars. And it's been it's been a really lovely track to grow up with. And. And it's, it basically was the start of my photography career because the first time I ever was able to get a vest to be able to work was for the 2018 Rolex 24. And that was really in time because Fernando Alonso, he was dipping his toes in the IMSA scene for the first time. Um, it was kind of a new generation of prototypes and GT cars. So I think we had the Ford GT there. Um, I don't know if it was for the first year or the second year that they were racing it. So there's a lot of cool dynamic things, and I've been, uh, it's, I've seen a lot of the changes in the motorsport industry through Daytona. So, 
it's not only been there for my career, but kind of a good portion of my life. And to be able to race it in such high detail in Forza has been a really cool thing since they introduced it in Forza 6. I remember the first time seeing it in the trailer for Forza 6 on the bank, and I'm like, that's Daytona! Oh, I'm so excited! And then it was in uh, Fudge Burst 2, um, in a little bit of a different light, but being able to race in Fudge Burst 2 with weather, day and night cycles, everything has been great too. Um, but Forza is like, you can't beat it. You got the Montoya spot right there where he kind of set the track on fire, running into a jet dryer. There's a lot of aspects of this game that I really enjoy. Then I really hope, I really hope the improvements to motors, the next motorsport game are as big of a leap that everyone is hoping because I know there's been a lot of games recently that we've been hyped up for, that I've been hyped up for, that haven't really delivered or been disappointments. So I'm really hoping motorsport kind of continues onto a better path, um, being a bigger leap from, from 7 to the next one compared to 6 to 7. I held on to loving 6 more than loving 7 for the longest time because I thought 6 was better. I didn't see 7 being too big of an improvement, but since then I have moved on to 7 and enjoyed it. And uh, I'm excited for the future, but whenever this pops up, especially in online lobbies, I'm like, oh hell yes, I'm, I'm confident. And it, there's actually a few tracks that I'm going to get to um, that for the first time I visited this year that I've also loved playing on, so there's some aspects that I've really only ever explored this year alone, which have been a big dynamic change, but one that I've welcomed. Unfortunately, there's some tracks that I really love that are not present on Motorsport, not even present on Project Cars, so there's some things that I can't really show or I can talk about it, but I can't show it. I, uh, blew through it! Oh, I blew through it, I blew through it. The amount of times I've seen drivers in real life, like, just completely miss that corner. Usually they don't have a wall to deal with if they blow through there, but it's happened a lot. Being on the back stretch, photographing them going through the bus stop, so, like, how much speed they carry is crazy. Especially the prototypes, they carry so much speed, it's unbelievable. Like, I'll, I'll talk about uh, another track while we finish up here. Um, another track that I really loved, it's also been kind of around for a good amount of my motorsport career and, and my time as a fan, has been St. Pete. I, they really only have St. Pete in iRacing, which is unfortunate because it's a really cool track for IndyCar and, and SRO and the Porsche Carrera Cup Series. Um, similar to like Long Beach, it's I don't know if it's bigger than Long Beach, but it's it's really kind of dynamic and again is is usually the start of the IndyCar season and is a street course, which is really lovable. And they've been doing it for years, so it's it, it's professional and they they know what they're doing. It's always a really great way to race to go to and watch and photograph that. And usually the weather cooperates. Like compared to Daytona and Sebring, we don't really have too much bad weather threatening the race weekends too much. Too much. Within a reasonable realm of things. Yeah, the amount of times I've seen people go off course in the bus stop has... it's a lot. Just because they carry so much speed that you gotta hit it just right, otherwise you're off. And the grass, especially when it gets wet, can really tear up your car. I don't know what lap we're on. Oh, we're on the last lap, okay. I didn't do too so well, well there, I kinda ran off the course a little bit, but that's fine. But yeah, um... St. Pete's a brilliant road course that is good to be at as a fan and good to be at working. But another brilliant road course, which I actually visited for the first time working this year, was Long Beach. I've only ever experienced it in gaming. I've never experienced it in real life until this year, and both racing it and now photographing it, I love it. I adore it. Specifically racing it, I love it because it's so tight. And it's fairly simple as a track, but... 
the corners when you hit them right is is lovable. It's 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 uh, the amount of speed you can carry, especially in an indie car. If you're doing it in an indie car, is so fun. But it does lead to some questionable moments if you uh, mess up some corners, especially if you have full damage on. And of course, if you're uh, racing at IRL, smacking some of the walls is not great, especially turn one. I remember um, this year, I was specifically photographing the start of the Porsche race. They have this like balcony area where you can catch them coming around the bend and be elevated and have them go through the first corner. And that was my first time uh, photographing up there and uh, unfortunately there was a little bit of a a little bit of a shake up with the leaders when they were coming through and um, so of course someone just dove in too deep or got pushed or something and just pretty much went head first into the tire barrier and it was like ah because this track is so short too that if something like that happens and it gives you a lot of damage especially on short races you're screwed and, it, and for IMSA, it's naturally a short race, only an hour and 25 minutes. So scrambling from the pits to places on track during the actual race was, was something incredible. It's stressful. Getting in and like getting in and out of a fire suit and just wearing the fire suit the whole time in order to be on pit uh, on the pit wall. It can sometimes be uh, really hot. Ooh, don't do the thing that I just described. I hit that so smooth and then he just had to slow up like that like pushing out of some of these corners hurts when you get it wrong it's getting it right that's the problem like how tight you have to be to the wall carrying all the speed through there coming up to the right hander The media center is in the convention center that we're passing underneath, so there's a section that you can stand at where they're going underneath the tunnel and the amount of echoes! The amount of echoes, like loud echoes from passing cars is incredible. I'm sucking so hard. You can also be at the center line right side of this island and have the cars just go around you, which is also fun. And they come close to the wall too, some drivers get really close, and they make passes there, which is very questionable. But there's a lot of sight lines around this track, around the tighter corners, where you get really good views of the cars. And it's weird because it's there's a shopping mall around here that it kind of runs through, so one of the days, um, I forgot which day it was, we were done, I think, working, and we went to the Bubba Gump that's just on this corner, and I love Bubba Gump but it's weird how like all the restaurants are still open so you just have you could just go eat at one of the restaurants after a long day as long as they don't you don't catch them when they're closing because they closed early during the race weekend and then they have the big convention center open for people because they have the garages in there so you have like garages and the fan experiences and everything and a big wide open convention area. And they also have the stadium trucks this year. I know St. Pete usually has the stadium trucks, but they had them here too. And it was uh, amazing how much speed they carry through the, the front stretch bends. The other photographer I was working with, he's like, he's never seen the stadium trucks in person. So watching how fast they were was surprising. Because they lift up on three wheels when they're going through tight corners. Sometimes they get up on two wheels because they're so heavy. Ooh, slidey. But again, the lap times are super short, so... Whether you're watching as a fan or you're photographing, the cars come back around quick. Ugh, doing that, doing that's not great. Doing that is very unfavorable. 
I'll switch to a third person and try to not wreck. I think this should be the last lap, I think. So I'll try not to wreck. I'm so used to first person. I used to race third person all the time in Forza 4. And Forza 6. And I was comfortable with it, but... Now, first person is... And, and the HUD view is kind of my primary. I can't make corrections as easily in third person as I can in first, which is a fault of myself. Oh, that was a bad punt. That was a very bad punt. I've screwed the car now. Yeah, I just, when the car gets, like, slidey, I can notice it much better in first person than I can in third, so that's completely my fault for doing that. I gotta deal with this for the last few corners. Why would you do that, you idiot? Why would you do that? Why would you hit like that, you moron? I screwed it, but it still works. Holy balls. Also, those bridges that you kind of see, um, those get you from one side of the track. There's like three bridges, or four. There's a lot of bridges. And that one specifically, you can get a really good sight line of the front straightaway, as well as when they come back around them making that left turn that I absolutely punted the hell out of. You get really good views around this track, so if you ever ever get a chance to, I would highly suggest that you uh, you check out Long Beach. It's a very good, especially since um, IMSA especially uploads their full races to YouTube after the races. I think it takes like a week or so for them to do it. So if you miss stuff out, if you're curious about it, they got the full replays. Those are cool. IndyCar also uploads, like, um, I forgot if it's the full replays or if they only do, like, old races. So, like, when they're preparing for a race weekend, they'll, they'll kind of hype people up and, sh and upload the full replay of something from a few years ago or really, really far back in time. I know Long Beach used to be really different, like, when, especially when Formula One used to go there a long time ago, way, way, way before I was born. Uh, what should be the next track up on our list? Um, oh, what about Sonoma? Sonoma is a really fun track. I have thoroughly enjoyed my time with Sonoma. The more and more time that I've spent coming here, especially this year, I have loved it. it the, the only thing about, that's kind of bad about Sonoma, and this has to do more with the SRO series, um, SRO America, is that they're 10... If you have too many cars on the track, there tends to be a little bit of a mess. A little bit of a mess. And what I mean by that is that the SRO races specifically are only about 40 to 50 minutes in length, besides the one, like, hour and a half larger series, GT World America, GT World America. So, when there's wrecks, which there kind of is, it leads to long cautions, and those eat up the time. Um, I don't think... NASCAR, NASCAR doesn't usually have that issue. They were actually pretty clean this year. Why the hell are we at sunrise? We don't normally have races like this early in the day. We'll have them late, but not this early. There's not really any natural, uh light around, like, uh, lights that they have up around here, morons. But photographing this track is also very fun. There's a lot of elevation, it's pretty wide open. It's only along, like, the back side, where there's not really much, damn it, damn it, damn it. And that's what happens when you get screwed up. You just push it. That's part of the problem with this track for a lot of drivers is going over the edge can can really be detrimental. Even if just a slight bit over the edge. It could be really bad. 
And this track really does have kind of two moods. Because certain parts of the year it's green like this, other parts it's a desert. And a fun fact about this track too, God, what is wrong with you? Why would you do that, you moron? I'm trying to tell fun facts and you're pushing me around like it's a stock car race. Um, there is a farm that kind of is to the left and right or for the back side of the track. And they have a bunch of sheep. So especially this year, when I went, they will let the sheep graze on the grass that is around the track. So during testing, the day, that, the first day that we were here, there was just sheep on the inside of the track and on the on the upper left hill, and you could, they would just be right right up against the parking, and it's, it was kind of strange. But there's a lot of them. There was a lot. Like, they kind of outnumbered the people that were here. Even all the crew members and the fans had outnumbered them by a large margin. But they just had them graze, and it was, it was <laughs> interesting. And the lap times are usually long here too, especially with the slower GT cars. Oh, I screwed it, I screwed it, I screwed it, I pushed too hard. Stock cars are really fun to, to race around here, because they're slidey. So get, feeling the weight shifts and getting them through the corners, especially this turn one section, is really fun. Don't you, don't pat my backside. I already had that happen before. The pit road also here is abnormally large. And what I mean by large, I mean very wide. You could be standing at the pit wall, you know, with the crew and everything, and you could probably fit like... Oh god, oh Jesus Christ, ooh, I was talking and not paying attention. You probably fit like six cars wide in the pit lane. So there was a time where uh, our team ended up winning the race, they dominated. So they let them run up to the wall to cheer them on coming through the last corner. But it, it takes a second to walk across to the wall. It just depends on what track it is. This track I'm sometimes strong with, other times I have these hiccups. But I think part of it's the Porsche is like very slidey. I don't know why. It's kind of like the Lambo. On the base setup, it's just so sly. Oh, and when somebody hits you, it's also slidey. So like, with the traction control, it's, it, it's like you're on ice. How about this? We'll do Indianapolis and then we'll do Road Atlanta. Indianapolis and Road Atlanta are actually two of the last races of the year that I have to deal with. And I, for some reason, abnormally I've been to Indianapolis like a lot more recently. I have no understanding of why it's become so common to, to race here now or to, to, to work here, but it is, um, I've been here probably too many times for the amount of time that it's been since the first time I've been here, which is about two years ago. Um, I think we'll switch it up to my Audi. I usually race Audis online anyways, it's just more stable, this one. But we'll, we'll, we'll take this around the track. And, um, I think IMSA's returning to Indianapolis next year, which is gonna be fantastic. I've mainly been here for the 8 hour, for, um, they have a big Porsche festival that just passed, so that was the mo one the most recent, um, event that I worked. And then, I was also here for the Indianapolis doubleheader with IndyCar and NASCAR, which I actually have a short blog about. So I've had a lot of experience being here, not only as a fan, but also working. So. It's not as dynamic, I would say, as the others, but I've grown to love it just for the pure fact that it's a legendary track. And there are some tricky, like, some really nice places where you can get the Pagoda. There, you can roam, when you're a photographer, usually you can roam all throughout the stands, so... Getting those, like, straightaway shots with the, oh my god, turn one here and the Pagoda, or on the backside of the straightaway going in this direction. Just going up to the top level of the stands to, to see all that is great. 
And I think on day one of the NASCAR and Car doubleheader, they had the stands open to fans. You weren't locked down to the seats you paid for. So I was able to roam a little bit. And that was very, very cool to see. But it is flat. It is flat. It doesn't have a lot of dynamics to it that the other tracks have, especially Road Atlanta. But it's you get a special like feeling when you're here. Like you're 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 always witnessing a part of history with any series that races here. Whether it's NASCAR, whether it's for the eight hour, whether it's IndyCar. And that's very special. Just being here in general is very special. Whether you're here for a race day or not. Oh, it pushes. Oh, the Audi pushes. Doesn't like to turn when it's under high speed. And one of the things that I have yet to experience, but I'm gonna maybe try to experience next year, is the Indianapolis 500. Obviously that's the oval portion and they're going in the other direction. But that's something that I really want to experience, um, even as a fan next year, if possible work, but I don't really see that in my near future. Um, but things always surprise me. There's a lot of events that I've attended over the past year or two that have really surprised me and kind of been short notice, so we'll see. All depends. Oh, I overshot that corner. I didn't hit the apex like a moron. This Audi, I love it, but it does not, under its stock conditions, it does not turn well. It's really just stiff, is what I'd say, stiff. But this will actually be the last event of the year for me, at least for what's planned. And it's a, it's pretty much like five days of non-stop action, topping it off with an AR race. And usually you'll get like a lot of international teams for the international for the um, eight hour race, including teams from Audi. They dominated last year. A lot of Ferrari teams. So it's a it's a it's a really cool race, and I think they live stream the entire race too on YouTube. So GT World is usually the channel that that live streams and uploads a lot of those races. So keep an eye out if you're curious about that, because uh, being able to watch this race live, especially when it is eight hours, is great. It's really fantastic and usually it's cold here too if you go in person it sometimes gets really freaking cold in indiana but the last event that we're gonna last track that we're gonna go to which is gonna be the um road atlanta it's gonna, it usually hosts the petite le mans which is the final race of the IMSA season and that is usually a 10 hour race going from morning to basically some early parts of the night so it'll get dark usually um, for just a short amount of time, that is. Uh, but the dynamics of its its slopes and the S's and some of the straightaways, it's, it's... When you're there and you kind of wade through some of the forested areas to overlook the you know, long sloping S's of the track going downhill, it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I'll do four laps around here. I do, again, this is a track that doesn't have all the conditions that you'd normally have. You sometimes can have rain. Obviously, for the Petite uh, Le Mans, it'll get dark here. It'll get really dark. There's not really too many lights around here besides some corners, so it gets freaking dark. Really dark. Which leads to a lot of, like, rotor glow in the straightaways when you, when you get to see certain angles. Um, but again, they said... For the next Forza Motorsport game, we're going to have a lot of the race dynamics, the weather changes, day and night, available for all the tracks. So, you know, pending them possibly removing any of these tracks, they shouldn't, because they have a good partnership, I think, with them. We will get a much better sense of what these events are in real life, which will be really cool. And if you mainly watch European racing, the vast majority of these tracks are rolling starts. You don't really have starting, standing starts for like, ooh, god, 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 oh, damn, it's... Yeah, 
you don't have standing starts for these races usually. Uh, I think GT SRO used to do it, like they used to do that at St. Pete, but there were so many incidents that they all do rolling starts now. But just the long straightaways, the sloping hills, the essence that we just went through. They're just fantastic. Oh god, I biffed it, I biffed it. And a lot of the tracks too, mainly here in the States if you're from abroad, they just offer so many, so much just accessibility. IMSA, SRO, even IndyCar to a point, offer so much accessibility to the fans to see drivers, to see the cars up close, to get great sight lines and open sight lines to the action. You know, the channels, like I said, they upload their full races on YouTube for anybody to watch. There's so much that they do that's just awesome for new people coming in. But yeah, if you follow my personal Instagram page, which I have two links, but it's Nicholas Wolf one, you can see a lot of my uh, photographs that I'll upload, especially going into these final races here. So you can see some of the work I do. If you're curious, if you're curious, that is kind of understand some of the things that I'm talking about and referencing here. I am so bad at that last corner for the video. That's great. But besides the left side of this track to the left of us, which is just all forest, um, but photographers can walk around there. This whole right side, for the most part, where you see all the tents and the people, those are sight lines that you can just, if you have a ticket, you can just go, you can just explore, see all the different kind of nooks and crannies of this place, camp, have fun with friends. It's all there to be discovered. This is a lot. This track is massive. Besides Long Beach, a lot of these tracks are huge. And they're just so natural with the way that they've been built. So it flows so nicely for the, for the drivers and for fans to go and watch. I wish they had Canadian Tire Motorsport Park because that was a fun track to go to for the first time this year, but they unfortunately do not have it. In Forza, at least. I mean, maybe with the new IMSA partnership and stuff, they will uh, maybe have it in the next Motorsport game. I don't think it was shown off, and I don't think they listed it, but one can hope that they would add it. But I do hope you enjoyed watching me kind of, sort of drive competently. It didn't really work out too much at Sonoma and here, but I do hope you've enjoyed my commentary talking about some of these elements that maybe you didn't know if you don't follow me normally. Um, I want to try to, like, make connections with regards to some of the things in my real life that I do enjoy, hoping that, oh god, that you would enjoy too. Maybe. Um, so, in any case, I do hope if you are a motorsport fan um, already, of course, you probably know a lot of this stuff, so I don't, you don't need the explanation from stupid me, but if you are curious about motorsport or, you know, you're, you're entering in and you don't know a lot, this is, you know, at least some insight, some direction to go into since, you know, there's a lot of resources that 
are just open to, to watch on YouTube, which is great. And um, again, I'm hoping the, the new motorsport game is kind of what a lot of people are aspiring for. It'll be really cool to see what, what's going to come out of that. But I um, actually don't know what, if they have a release date or not. So I guess we'll just see going into 2023 what, what they're, what they're going to show us. But uh, again, thank you very much for watching this video. And I do hope you keep an eye out uh, for more streams and videos. Again, I'm going to be working a little bit. So it's going to keep me away from being able to stream and make videos. But um, more so like the last chunk, the last little bit of the year, there's not really anything specifically planned for me work-wise. So I'll have a little bit more time to do streams and videos. So just keep an eye out for that when that does happen. And I'll keep keep you up to date, up to date on my um, Instagram and stuff. So I hope you have a good day or night wherever you are. And I will catch you next time.